Welcome back here. You may have already heard that the CDC is investigating a rare heart problem in teenage vaccine recipients. And we want to find out just how rare this is and what you should do and what parents should do to keep it in mind about uh, vaccinating your child, how that all plays a role in this. Joining us from the Southern California Hospital Heart Institute to explain more about myocarditis is Dr. Ernst von Schwartz. Doctor, thanks so much for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Eric. Sure. Well, let's talk about uh, myocarditis. What is this and, and, and how do people develop it? Well, myocarditis is basically an inflammation of the heart muscle cells, and that's often caused by viruses. Um, COVID, for example, can cause myocarditis, and we have seen several cases of COVID-induced myocarditis during the last year. But there's other causes. Uh, certain autoimmune diseases, lupus, for example, can cause myocarditis. In most cases, <clears throat> it's actually a relatively mild course of the disease, and many people are relatively asymptomatic, and the diagnosis is actually never made. But there is a few cases, very few cases, where the um, uh, infection, the virus, or even certain vaccines can cause an active destruction of the heart muscle cells. And that can lead to different forms of heart problems, including irregularities, arrhythmias, sudden death in rare cases even, or weakness of the contractile force, meaning heart failure. And in few, very few cases, uh, we might even need to do um, invasive therapies, um, left ventricular assist devices, even heart transplantation for those cases. Let's talk about how rare myocarditis is. I know you said there were several cases of it, but there's also been a lot of people that are getting the vaccine, right? So would you characterize it as rare or what are some of the numbers and data behind it? What it is, is, it is rare in general. So uh, worldwide, there's per year approximately 1.5 million cases diagnosed. That's all over the world of myocarditis. Keep in mind that the diagnosis is often clinical, but certain um, features have to be fulfilled. For example, an elevation of the enzymes of the heart, indicating some damage of the heart muscle, the troponin levels are elevated, and often echocardiographic or other imaging features indicate uh, an inflammation of the heart muscle. So it, it is rare and more than 80% heal out completely, but we need to be aware of that diagnosis. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, there have been a couple of dozen cases of adolescents reported now after getting the second dose of the MRA vaccine. Keep in mind there are more than 4 million adolescents uh, under the age of 17 so far have received the vaccine in the United States. United States alone, and uh, there's just a few dozen cases of possible myocarditis, and the CDC is investigating a cause-effect relationship here. So a few dozen out of four million. Okay. Um, so given all of that, let's just be clear on this. Do you, you feel that the risk is low enough that people should still be getting the vaccine? That there's no Absolutely. reason. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, I think the risk of having a myocarditis caused by COVID is much higher with Got a it. much worse outcome. Keep in mind, even in the U.S., 300, approximately 300 children died of COVID. It's a small number, but still, I mean, it, it's devastating. So uh, compared to the benefits of getting the vaccine and not getting COVID, it's, it's much superior um, than the risk uh, of getting a vaccine-induced myocarditis. And keep in mind, there's other vaccines which also have shown to induce myocarditis, for example, tetanus vaccine can cause it too. Very and important. as long as it's diagnosed and quickly treated, just keep an eye for symptoms, shortness of breath, chest pain, etc. Um, I think it's fine. Very important message to get out there. Dr. Ernst von Schwartz, thanks so much for your time here this morning. I always appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for weighing in and your expertise here. So good to know. We've been hearing that common theme here that right. uh, the risks do not get close to outweighing the mm -hmm. benefits of actually getting the vaccine. Right. Like, I mean, you said it right there. If you get COVID, you have a higher risk of myocarditis right. than getting the vaccine and seeing that. Good happen. to know the symptoms so, and everything. Mm -hmm. We want to just at least bring oh, that yeah. to you here this morning.